Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the North Town News Magazine, and I am going to cut the Cook County budget. Okay. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. <laughs> For the identity of the real Marty Levinson, please stay tuned to the North Town News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Hi everybody, Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the World Wide Web at www.ntnm.org. You will find alphabetical listings and chronological listings of our guests. The alphabetical are easiest to go through. You'll have links to all the shows on YouTube. You'll see who the upcoming guests are. And um, on YouTube, over 80,000 watches. And I don't even count anymore. It just, I can't, I don't have the time. Thank God you guys are watching so many. And um, it's really wonderful. Uh, community policing, we're real big on that, caps24.org. Um, that's for the 24th district, which is West Rogers Park and Rogers Park. Throughout the rest of the city, 311. Uh, we do want you to know if you're in this district, and specifically in the, uh, in the West Rogers Park area, and also in Rogers Park too. Uh, for instance, in 2412, which is, which is the beat that I'm in, uh, burglaries and robberies are up, but overall index crime is down 5%. There is more going on than that, too. Also in Sonny's Beat, which is 2413. But if you want to find out what's really going on, and there's a lot of stuff you should know and you should be, you have your finger on the pulse, you got to come to the meetings. Forget the message boards. They're nice places to meet some people. You want to have fun gossiping. You want to spend a couple minutes. That's fine. But don't expect real information there. You know, if you want the real stuff, look at the cop eye to eye, talk to him. Call, you can call on the phone, too. You got a police problem? 911 is a good number to call. It tends to work. In any event, speaking of YouTube, were we just speaking of YouTube? <laughs> no, I'm just making this up as I go. The first and third most watched shows of any shows we have done, and the two shows that still get the, that are being watched the most. Now, by the way, Marty Levinson is on show number two, which is the barbershop there show. You go. But the Deep Tunnel show, which is number one, which it's like, Right now, it's being watched in record numbers. About 500 people a week watch it. Okay, and our trip along the North Shore Channel has people risen to number three. That's only been on less than a year. Right now, I would estimate we're, we're getting about 100 watches a week, which for us is pretty good, especially because, you know what? There's no sex, no drugs, no rock and roll in it. You know, it's, it's intelligent conversation. Um, th there is some pollution stuff, so maybe some of the environmentalists are watching it. Um, but anyway, my guest is Terry O'Brien. Hi, Avi. Thanks for having me on again. First of all, my pleasure. And of course, Terry is presently the <clears throat> president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And he's been president 13 years, is it? 13 years as president, 21 years on the board. So. And been elected four times? Four times. Okay, uh, and you decided that you need another another job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 or work towards cleaning up another uh, facility. But... Uh, but I'm thinking the reason why you're getting all the Talk hits is because Talk about waste management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and the secretary were talking about cleaning up something earlier. I forgot what it was. But uh, Yeah, he was talking, you know, the Secretary of State, Jesse White, who was a guest last week, was talking about if you throw things on the road, there's yeah, the all debris. these fines. Yeah. So you get a fine. So uh, tough love, I think he called it. Tough love. Yeah, $1,500 fine if you throw something out of your car. I did not realize that. I, uh, I know a lot of municipalities used to have that uh, ordinance in place where they would uh, find people for throwing debris out the window. 
But uh, I think I'm thinking that the reason that there's home, so many hits on those two particular sites is that there's probably a dozen to 15 candidates running for the water rec this time. So it might be uh, all oh, they trying to learn you. something. But I want to tell you, even before the election, it's it's our single most watched show. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but it's actually been watched about five times more than any other okay. show. Well, it's it's an interesting uh, engineering feat. And uh, oh, is maybe well. One thing I'll tell you. You know what? You can actually, and I, and, I, and I know you've got a meeting downtown afterwards, or I'd show you on the computer. If you if you were to click on the site, click on it on YouTube, underneath you'll see statistics and data. Click on the statistics okay. and data. It's actually at engineering libraries all over the world. Um, there's two different engineering libraries on yeah. the web where over a thousand people have watched it from those engineering libraries. Hmm. And if you take a look, and also, I mean, YouTube gives you such cool statistics. It's been watched in so many different countries. It's unreal. They actually is like like little things for each country. And yeah. You'll see like a little coloration that'll tell you a lot watched, a little watched, all the rest of it. You know what? Ne next time I'll try to count all the countries, but a lot. I mean, this is like a worldwide thing. Well, uh, like I said, I mean, even the English and the French before they came mm -hmm. here, they uh, they looked at the technology we were using mm -hmm. when they constructed the channel underneath the English mm -hmm. Channel. So. No, that's right. As matter of fact, we've talked about that many times on the show, and that's a tunnel that they. Um, I think your tunnel's 108 miles, their tunnel's about 101 miles, is that uh, close to right? Ours is 109, and uh, there were three 33-mile tunnels with the English and the French. 99. Yeah, there was two uh, two actually transport tunnels and then a maintenance tunnel in the middle. So. And basically your tunnel will call, wind up costing a total of? Uh, with the tunnels and the reservoirs, it should be about $3 billion when it's all said and done. Theirs yeah. was about $15 billion. And that's for nine miles less? Yeah. So, <laughs> cost effective. It's taken us a little longer than them, but you know. But, um, you know, listen, you save $12 billion here, $12 billion there, you might actually be able to lower property tax a little we, bit. That's right, we can only <laughs> only move as fast as the money comes in. I don't know, they must have been printing it there, you know, so. But. Uh, yeah, I think they do print it over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yes, I'm, uh, I'm off and running for a new. Uh, yeah, now before we start office. with that, I just okay. got to ask you real quick because I, I don't, you know, you're, you're a very popular guy these days. I don't get to talk to you as often. Um, the Neither does my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, it, it's important for me to point out that many of the guests that we have on the show, as a matter of fact, most of them, um, are bribed with organic vegetables from the backyard or at least pesticide free. And, um, you know, so it's very possible that he might walk away with some cherry tomatoes, some chives, some rosemary, and some basil. Um, we did offer the same bribe to the Secretary of State, but I don't think he cooks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Could take it to his local restaurant where he eats. But, yeah. but understand that all our guests are offered these bribes, and we do try. <laughs> full disclosure. Yeah. So full disclosure. <laughs> uh, but you were saying 12 to 15 people are running for Water Rack? Probably Water Rack, yeah. Wow. It's we'll have to go show. through the list. and. Um, yeah. There's. Uh, is Dean running? No, Dean's not going to run. Dean's going to run for uh, committeeman of uh, Nutria Township. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, so uh, he just I just ran into him yesterday and he said that... Uh, yeah, I ran into Dean Miragos at the Illinois State Crime Commission banquet because he's been a guest on the show yeah. and uh, he's somebody who's, who's uniquely qualified for water rec. It's, yeah. uh, it's a shame he did... It's such a, it's such a strange election and... Uh, where are the three incumbents that are... Uh, uh, well, there's only two incumbents because... Or, well, there'll only be one incumbent on the ballot and that's Barbara McGowan. And Barbara's done a, a fine job. You know, with oh, the so uh, Gloria's, Gloria Majewski is, is retiring? Gloria has announced her retirement. She went to slating last week and uh, uh, offered up her resignation to the committeeman. Wow. Uh, at that. So she'll serve out the rest of her term uh, to the end of the year, and then um, uh, there'll be two open spots because Commissioner Young went back on staff right. uh, in our public affairs department, so she's no longer on the board. And her seat was uh, taken by uh, Mariana uh, Spiropolis. Which was a governor appointment. Yes, Governor Quinn had appointed her over about a month ago now. So uh, so is she running for... Uh, so she's running, and the three slated candidates yeah. are uh, Barbara McGowan, Mariana Spiropolis, and Michael Alvarez. Uh, Mike Alvarez is a gentleman from the north side. Um, Any relation to Anita? Or? No, no relation to Anita. I, I knew his father growing up. Uh, they grew up in uh, St. Gregory's Parish uh, on Ashland and Bryn Mawr. Yeah. And uh, I guess he grew up in St. Hillary's Parish where Pat O'Connor and I grew up, the, the younger gentleman who's running right now. Um, I don't know much about his background. I just yeah. know that uh, he's been out, and as have all the other candidates, been out uh, you know, lobbying for endorsements.
But in the meantime, it's very possible that if he's elected, you won't be there at that point in time. Exactly. If uh, I'm successful in my race for county board president, then, uh, then there will be uh, an appointment uh, for the governor for the balance of my two years that's going to be left until 2012. And then, uh, of course, they have their election of officers every two years anyhow. So, Right. Now, um, okay, so let's talk about why you're running. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think I said the last time I was on the show, Avi, that, uh, you know, I, I might be an elected official, but uh, first and foremost, I'm a taxpayer. Yeah. And uh, I think every day you open up the newspaper, you know, at night before you go to bed, you're watching the news and you see what's going on uh, in county government, you get a little, little upset and you get more upset based on the fact that uh, they've raised the sales taxes. And, uh, you know, it, just looking at some of the numbers of, of what's transpired over there and why they said they needed to raise the sales tax, you know, you're wondering if you get the full story the whole time. Uh, I attended their September 1st board meeting when they wanted to uh, actually repeal the sales tax. And then again, uh, um, Todd Stroger was successful in that, that repeal failing. And, um, you know, it, the numbers changed. Originally, when they told us that uh, there is a $400 million deficit Excuse eight, me. eight months ago, yeah. um, and that's why they needed the one, the, the ten, bump the sales tax up to 10.25. Uh, this meeting, it comes out that there was only $283 million in deficit. Yeah. And the fact that there was potentially another $300 million of revenue out at the hospital that still could be collected and utilized to offset the deficit. That'd be a nice thing to get. Well, <laughs> simple math tells you 300 million, you know, minus 283 million yeah. gives you 17 million on the on the positive side. So, why again did they did they raise the sales tax? You still we still haven't gotten the answer. As a matter of fact, you know what? Even my brother, who is not political and the least doesn't follow this stuff, uh, we we do film it about two or three weeks in advance usually. Um, the latest scandal was in the last day or two where, with somebody getting too much money and having to, to resign and all the rest of it. He, he, sees, uh, he sees President O'Brien here and his first question is, I really hope you get there because we've got to really stop what's going on. Well, <laughs> I think what happened the other day in the paper was a fallout from the, the actual slating process uh, that took place as well as uh, the repeal of the sales mm -hmm. tax. One of the the commissioners, there was an article in the Sun-Times yesterday about one of the commissioner's uh, brother who had a job in the county uh, with facilities actually was let go because yeah. this particular commissioner did not support uh, Todd Stroger in keeping the sales tax in place. So there was retribution from what I understand. But um, Yeah, I did, I did happen to see that during the slating and nobody was slated that uh, I think most of the people that voted for him worked for him or um, recently worked for him. Yeah, worked for him or had somebody that was close to them yeah. that worked for him. So, um, and as, as, you know, that whole process went about, uh, it ended up that it's going to be an open primary for, yeah. for this particular race. So, which, you know, doesn't bother me one way or another because I've done this thing in the past mm -hmm. with regards to running countywide. 1988, I didn't have the support of the Democratic Party. That was the first time I ran. I remember that. Um, you didn't even have the support of your own committeeman. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was true, too, but... Bad, Howie, bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, the you campaign... You had my support. I know. And the campaign was built on family and friends. And Avi being a friend, uh, we were successful in this, in this campaign. And, and that's basically how I'm working at this time around, is, you know, we're getting family and friends involved again. Um, and I think on February 2nd, uh, people are going to be a little shocked. Yeah, by the way, I, I want to mention, you know, there's a couple people I want to mention uh, publicly because, you know, Terry, Terry used to live in the neighborhood for a short period of time. So, um, you know, we, we were talking about this on the, I don't know if it was the last show or privately, but, but Mary Angle across the street, whose maiden name is Gleason, Gleason, but from those of you from the area, the small Gleason family with 11 children on Farwell, not, not the larger one with 17 kids on coil. Yeah. And she told me that used to happen all the time to them where they got mixed up. There was another uh, Gleason with 16 kids on Pensacola. Really? Yeah. So, so anyway, you know what? M Mary, without being solicited, nothing. Just, you know, she, she knows who you are. Yeah. Um, she said to me, get me some petitions. And that's, Avi, that's been the feeling around the county. I mean, you know, um, you know, a lot of people don't think I have name recognition mm. because of the agency that I'm at. Mm. But it's amazing how many people, you know, lives we've uh, impacted over the 21 years that I've been there 
you know, not only with our operations, but the fact that now we've taken on stormwater management. Mm -hmm. and, and having that responsibility, we've worked with a lot of these mayors in these communities and a lot of the residents because they have over the years been fighting the problem of flooding in their basements and businesses and roadways in their communities. Well, so. the funny thing is I remember, I remember a couple instances where, you know, like I didn't know the person at the water department, but my, 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 uh, my late friend Harold Blasco's uh, mother was having a problem between Sacramento, got an outrageous water bill beyond belief. She kept calling through normal channels with government to try to get somebody out there to check the meter. So, you know, like his mother calls me, begs me, who can you get? I, I had no idea. I already sent her to everybody else. So I called you because even though you're, you're at the other end, you're, you're after they flush, not, not, not the <laughs> not before <four> you's. <laughs> so, but you know what? You apparently called somebody and within 24 hours somebody was there because the fact is in a situation like that, let's say that kind of water was coming from a broken pipe underground. Yep. The, the foundation of her house can be threatened. And, and little things like that and taking care of it get remembered. Although I've got to say, Mary told me, I couldn't believe this. Um, you know what, I, I, her brother Emmett used to run, uh, be, be the retail manager at Sun Drugs okay. uh, on the corner here, which was Roban's beforehand. Yeah. Okay, and Emmett told me that, that, uh, that Mary gave him a petition for you and he wouldn't sign it. And I said, really? I said, okay, how come you didn't want to sign it? He said, because I signed somebody else's for Terry two days before. Oh, okay. I thought maybe he wanted to circulate his own. <laughs> Help me out. Well, that could be. That but, could uh, be. So that was funny. But uh, no, I, you know. what you bring up, Avi, I mean, it, it's just a simple concept. Mm. You know, uh, government is to be here to help people. Yeah, people and, and, lose sight of that, though. Yeah, mm. and, and exactly they do. And, mm. and that's the unfortunate thing. And I think that's part of what's wrong with county government. Um, people are there, but they forget they're there to watch cut help the public and serve the public, the people that put them there. So it's just, you know, it's an unfortunate thing and it's just, it's, it just seems like it's a collapse of that particular system because nobody communicates with each other. Yeah. None of the elected officials, I mean you got 17 board members, you've got 11 elected officials, and I don't know if there's a dialogue that goes on between them, you know, with regards to issues that face that county. That's one of the things I, I've got to say that I, I know from experience, you've got a very diverse group of people at Water Rec. The eight other commissioners, they're not on the same page. No. I mean, we, we, not even close. Everybody has their own ideas. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that, that basically what you've done is you've been able to work them. They, you know what? When you see them in public, they're, they're a united team. Yeah. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. Well, and I, I, you know, you have to work together. You have to work together yeah. to get things done. I mean, uh, just at that uh, September 1st meeting, getting back to that board meeting, mm. the county board, I mean, the barbs and the personal insults that were being thrown at each other. I'm like, what is this? I said, this is like a street fight. Mm. This is a, a boardroom. You know, I said, it's all right to disagree, but don't be disagreeable. Yeah. And it was just, it was out of hand. And I'm like, you know, the animosity. I mean, that's got to change. You know, I mean, because that, that, those proceedings are on cable TV. And yeah. when people see that on TV, <laughs> you know, they got to start scratching their head and saying, what's going on with our government? You know. Yeah, you know, and not too many of them are good. You know, like Larry Suffering's a big guy, but, you know, like I don't think, well, he's my age, so he, he's a little older than me, so I don't think he can do too much fighting anymore. <laughs> well, it's, he's it's, too it, peaceful. It, it's not the fighting, it's just it's the personal insults, you know, and that's, you know, that's got to stop. You know, everybody's, you know, once the election's over, everybody's got to sit down, they got to work with each other for the good of the public. No, that'd be a very nice thing. And the good of the government. You know, it's, it's a simple concept, you know, and, and that's my intention is to bring good government to the people that deserve it. And that's well, the speaking, taxpayers speaking of the Speaking of good people, by the way, I, I, you know what, I, I keep wanting, I want to say hi to Bill Halpern. Bill, Bill's a major fan of yours. You know, Bill isn't getting out as much as he, as he did before. Bill's a really good guy. And uh, I, I know when Bill gets around, he's always been a big fan of yours, and he well, always wants me to make sure I tell you that... Um, Bill was a governmental worker that got it. He yeah. understood service. I mean, he was in the 50-50 program for the sidewalks for a long time, and, you know, he, he helped people, and that's, that's what it's all about. No, he is, and he's still into that. He's still, you know, he's such a good-hearted guy, yeah. and when, when I see him today, you know, I, I see him sometimes at, on the holidays and stuff. He used to be in synagogue every day, and... But anyway, uh, Bill, I hope you're feeling better and I um, want to say hi to your wife and, uh, and Tova and everybody else there and I hope everything's going well. Likewise, Bill. Yeah. The, um, there, there's so much with county government. I mean, it's sort of like, this is almost like a treasure trove for you for good. You know, it's like if you want to make things better. You know, I, I had Jesse White last week. Jesse White's a great guy. And, uh, you know, he's always got these creative ideas. He's always trying to do things. And, of course, the Secretary of State's office, 
um, after people like Paul Powell and George Ryan and, 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 well, you know, it's a shame Paul Powell never got to put the pinstripes on. <laughs> <laughs> but, too many uh, shoeboxes. <laughs> but you know, you know what? A guy comes in there was clean, and, and it's sort of like, you know, it's funny because he, he was talking about, and you do the same thing, that you're not allowed at all to give, they has got 4,000 employees, they got to be worth at least 500 bucks a year each if you want to rake them yeah. for money. He won't allow them to give a nickel to them. Yeah, yeah. And, we're, and, we're, and you know, we got that same statute in our Yeah, I saw in the paper when you were too. returning people, so. money to people, because you didn't realize that there was a statute. Yeah. But even in those cases, you were very good well, about we, it. Well, yeah, and we had, from the day I ran in 1988, yeah. even though I worked at the agency yeah. uh, before I'd left and went to the private sector and decided to come back as a commissioner, um, my campaign, the, the philosophy and the strategy was never to ask anybody for a dime. Yeah. I mean... Uh, from, from the agency. I mean, we just, you know, I'm not about to, to hold up my friends to, to get me elected. And um, th what we did is we said, you know, if they wanted to come or whatever, we would we gave them a complimentary ticket, yeah. you know, and, and that was that. So, uh, but the, like you said, there was that obscure statute in which, you know, the board was notified that, you know, any contributions that were given, whether they received a complimentary ticket or not, would have to be returned. And, and it actually wasn't a ton of people, so you were obviously not direct. It was like a half a dozen people or yeah, something. Yeah, it, like it wasn't that many at all, and and we had done it five months before the yeah. story. Which, even which is the, proof that you're not yeah. soliciting these people. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Jim Nelly was telling me that um, at your last event, uh, people from the water wreck were not allowed to be there. That's correct. That's correct. So I didn't get and to I've... see Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> and, and by the way, if, if you want to know how the veggies are, ask Julie. Because I, I, I'm going to try to to give some to Terry if, if we remember, and uh, you know you'll ask your friend Julie if they were any good. Any good, but uh, <laughs> but no, but, Julie. <laughs> but on that but on that that side of things, you know, basically the statute prohibits any district employee not only making contributions to to elected officials, but from participating in uh, any campaign um, as a manager or in, in any involvement. So I mean, the only thing they can do as employees is vote. That's mm. all they're allowed to do. So I mean, they really don't have any First Amendment rights. So uh, when it comes to actively supporting a partic particular candidate they want to support. So that means despite the, how many employees are there in Water Rec? We got about 2,200, Avi. 2,200. So we had 3,000 way back in 1988, but we've had a reduction in our workforce. Well, you get to be efficient, I guess. Well, <laughs> and it, it, what has happened over the years is we've gone to new technologies, you know. Yeah. I mean, computerization, automation, is is done a great thing with regards yeah. to our operations, um, and we've done that all while we've taken on an additional responsibility of stormwater management. Yeah. Uh, we just took that responsibility on is in 2004. So, um, it, it's something to say, you know, if if you come more efficient, you do some consolidation, you do some streamlining, things still work. Um, we didn't have to lay anybody off at the district or fire anybody. We did it through attrition. So when people retired, you know, we looked at those positions to see if they actually needed to be refilled. Yeah. And uh, if they weren't, then we would just what we call appropriations control that position, okay. put it up to the side. So, well, that and that's what we're going to do with county government too. We're going to we're going to look at everything. Um, you know, it's just looking at some of the the stuff that I've been going through as this campaign has been moving forward. You know, is like their purchasing process. Each department has their own purchasing. Why do you need 12 different purchasing departments? Um, when you can have one where you'd have the using department who needs to have something purchased or a contract let out, can generate the actual scope of work, then bring it over to the purchasing department, let them slap on their boilerplate language, and then send the bid out on the street for for competitive bid. Yeah. It's a simple concept. We've got eight departments by the, at the water rec yeah. and one purchasing department. And that purchasing department handles all those contracts, whether it's for engineering, maintenance and operations, our law department, engineering, you know, it's all covered under that one department. Those departments draft, like I said, the scope of work, but everything then is handled through the purchasing. So, pretty simple concept. Yeah, that makes sense. And the county has, I take it, a uh, purchasing department for each uh, sector? Basically, yeah. yeah. Every uh, every elected official's office, hospitals, yeah. you know, they have their own. Um, you know, and the other thing I find amazing, too, is that uh, information technology over there. 
not every department is on the same system or on the same platform. No. So, you know, that was another thing we had problems with at the Water Reclamation District. You know, one department was using the Apple system, another yeah. one was using in Microsoft, another one was using something else. And I, and I remember when I first got there, I said to the, our general superintendent, I go, nobody can communicate with each other here. He says, sure we can. We talk to each other. I said, no. I said, by computer. I said, because everybody's on a different platform. And I said, what you need and what we had to do is go to Springfield to develop an IT department. Oh. So we had to go down there. We had to get two positions put into the budget, a director of information technology yeah. and an assistant director, which, you know, because we're, you know, governed by the General Assembly. So we got those in place. And then what we did is we pulled the IT people that were in the various departments into the, the main IT department. And, um, and as years gone on, you know, people have retired. We haven't replaced those positions. But now everybody's on the same platform. Mm -hmm. Everybody can talk to each other. Our R&D department, when they want to generate a user charge fee bill, can send it to finance, and finance can create that bill with the information that the R&D department has. So, um, and again, it makes for you know efficiency and streamlining with regards to uh, uh, the operations of the agency. Yeah, for whatever reason, I've never thought about Cook County government as being um, efficient, and I always thought of them as the. You know, it's funny because when Larry suffered in uh, first. First, when he talked about stealth government, you know, being such a large agency. I think they're the third largest and you're the fourth largest. Yeah, exactly. So people don't realize how big Water Rec is. But, you know, mm. people say, you know, it's large. No. Yeah. But in a way, it's not. I mean, it can be dealt with the same way, you know, our agency. Yeah. I mean, because you do have various departments. Right. It's it's a management deal. That's, you know, that's the whole thing. I'm trying to set it up. Yeah. As you know, properly. it's interesting because I was trying to, you know, I, I've never really thought about the scope of government because there's never been much intelligent thinking coming out of uh, the central Cook County government. But I started realizing that virtually all of these people, um, virtually all of the different heads of, of you know, be it uh, Tom Dart, yeah. you know, who's the sheriff, or Anita Alvarez, who's the state's attorney. Um, I've had most of these people on the show, and, and actually, you know what, the idea he, he has actually struck me as, you know, like, why not get them all to sit together and talk on the show face to face, and actually, like, you know, I, I always wonder, do these people actually talk to each other? Well, it, one of the ideas I want to do is, yeah. when I'm elected, is, is to be able to bring them in every quarter yeah. and look at your budgets yeah. and see where they're at on their budgets. And not only their budget people, but them yeah. as elected officials. Because they should be held just the amount accountable for that as the board members that have to vote on this yep. particular budget. I mean, and, and, and that's what you're hearing a lot. He says, well, you know, with the sales tax issue, that a lot of these departments, the user departments, haven't stepped up to the plate. Well, has anybody asked them to? You know, you got you got to sit them down. And, and it can't be just when the budget process for the next year starts. It has to be quarterly just to make sure everybody's in line with their budget as the year goes on. Because once you get to the end and they start falling short on funds, you know, they can't start coming back to you. Because then you have to start going back to the taxpayers. Yeah. And that's not right. No, that's not right. And we, that's not we, right. Can't, we can't, you know, uh, tax our way out of these problems. And that's, and that's what's happening right now. I like those words. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of paying lots of tax. No. No, no, I don't mind paying tax. I don't know a lot of people know. that are. <laughs> you, yeah, especially in these uh, tough economic times. Um, want to tell people your website? Yeah, my website is www.obrienforcookcounty.com. Our uh, campaign office is now at 662 West Grand Avenue. The phone number there is 312-733. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, 8003. Okay, and I know it that... It should uh, go online. Well, it'll be online the time your show comes out. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, some, some of the website is online, not all yet. I yeah. did check it out. Uh, Granger Tiriano has been helping you. Um, Sonny Hirsch has been helping me. I want to thank very much my guest, uh, t President Terry O'Brien. Thanks, Avi. Thanks, uh, Avi. Running to be te President Terry O'Brien from MWRD to the Cook County mm -hmm. Board. Good luck in the election. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye.